The ballistic pendulum was invented in 1742 by English mathematician Benjamin Robbins. It was used to measure the speed of a bullet. This example shows how a ballistic pendulum works. In this example, I have a bullet that's 8 grams and it is fired into a 2 kilogram block and becomes embedded inside the block. As a result of the collision, the combo swings up to a maximum height of 0.07 meters. Find the initial speed of the bullet. This problem has two parts. At first, there is a collision between the bullet and the block. And then the combo swings up high. So there is the collision. And then there is the swinging part. For collision, we can use the conservation of momentum. For the swinging part, do you remember doing problems like this? Something like a, um, there's a vine over there and Tarzan is running and then grabbing onto the vine and then he would swing up high. What idea did we use for those problems? We use the conservation of energy, right? If we ignore the air resistance and friction, the total initial mechanical energy would equal to the total final mechanical energy. So we have to do this problem as a two-part problem. And there are different stages. So I'm just going to call this before collision is 1. At the end of the collision is 2. And at the end of the collision, that is the beginning of the swing. And then swings to the maximum height, that's the third stage. So I can say the collision is stage 1 to 2, and then the swinging part is stage 2 to 3. Because we have information about the end, the 0.07 meters being the maximum height, I'm going to do the swing part first. For the swinging part, the total mechanical energy at the bottom of the swing equals to the total mechanical energy at the highest point of the swing. At the bottom of the swing, we have kinetic energy, and that's the bullet inside the block times the speed at the bottom of the swing, so I'm just going to call it V2. And then at 3, the maximum height, we have MGY. So of course, the mass cancels, and that means uh, 1 half V2 squared would equal to G. I'm just going to use 10 for G, and the maximum height is 0 0.07. So from here, I can find the V2 to be 1.18 meters per second. And that is the speed of the combo at the bottom of the swing and at the end of the collision. Now let's look at the collision part. For the collision, we can use the conservation of momentum. Before the collision, the block has no momentum. The bullet is the only one with the momentum. So we have the M times V for the bullet. The bullet is 8 grams. We have to change it to kilograms. So that will be 0 0.008 kilograms. Times of velocity, we do not know. We're looking for it. And that's it for the initial momentum. At the end of the collision, the bullet is inside the block, which means the bullet and the block, they move together with that 1.18 velocity. So if we do this calculation, we'll find this velocity at the very beginning. We can call it V1 if we want to. This V1 would be 296 meters per second, and that's the speed of the bullet. When we do this problem in class, I often have some students who would treat this problem as a one-step problem. So, initially we have a bullet with the kinetic energy. At the end, the bullet and the block combo is up high. So, 
we can use the conservation of energy goes from all the way from the very beginning to the very end at the very beginning we have the bullet with the initial kinetic energy at the end the bullet is inside the block and there's the mgy now if you put the numbers in you're going to find that the initial speed of the bullet is 18.7 meters per second does this one look like a bullet speed not really right so what went wrong over here why couldn't we use this to find the speed of the bullet because uh, for the collision part even though the momentum is conserved the mechanical energy is not conserved just imagine that this bullet has to squeeze into this block and gets embedded in this process there must be a lot of friction as this bullet goes through the block and gets embedded a lot of heat is produced so from the first stage to the second stage a lot of the mechanical energy has turned into heat and we don't know how much of that energy is turned into heat so we don't have enough information to use conservation of energy but the mechanical energy is definitely not conserved because the mechanical energy is lost to heat in this process and then the swinging part the mechanical energy is conserved because once the bullet becomes embedded and comes to rest there is no more mechanical energy being lost so this part is perfectly fine for us to use the conservation of energy but not the collision part and for the second part the swinging part the momentum is not conserved because the net force on the system is not zero so we cannot treat this problem as a one-step problem because the, the very initial mechanical energy does not equal to the mechanical energy at the very end and very initial momentum does not equal to the momentum at the very end either see obviously at the maximum height what do you think the momentum is it's uh, zero right because uh, at the highest point that's a turning point the speed is zero so there is no conservation of momentum for the whole process either there's only conservation of momentum for the collision part and then the conservation of uh, energy or the conservation of the mechanical energy for the swinging part so we have to deal with this problem with two separate steps this one step thing does not work